Loretta's word yesterday, she had a specific word for our church, our ladies. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's for the whole church. Because in the Holy Spirit, the pres what she spoke when she came in our little church, where the presence of God dwells stronger than you know, see? Um, she said, I felt such a bursting in my heart. There is such love and anointing here. And she was just bursting inside. And that was the presence of the Lord. That was the Holy Spirit. You cannot manifest the anointing and the Holy Spirit in a video, in a best talent, in a best singing. You become a believer. And the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart. We don't say, Lord, come in my head. Jesus, come in my head. We say, Jesus, come into my heart. Where we all dwell. And that's where the presence of the Holy Spirit dwells. So though we may not understand some things with our minds, that doesn't mean we're not smart. But the things of the Holy Spirit and the things of God cannot be discerned or understood without the Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit moves in ways that we don't understand with our human minds at times. The presence of God is strong here. And every person who has come into our midst, the Holy Spirit has touched. Now it may be for um, to let them know he's here and they're confirming to another believer, because spirit to spirit. There are other spirits that are not of the Lord, and they respond to the presence mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit also. Now, yesterday, we had a whole lot of Holy Spirit in here mm -hmm. yeah. because he responds to those who love him. Mm -hmm. He's gentle. He can be strong. And we refer to him as he. Not it, not a she, he, because he's a part of the Godhead, the Father, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And he responds to those whose hearts are open. He will not force his way in. He will leave. If a group of people or a person doesn't want him, he will not push his way in. But those who want him, who've tasted and seen how good the presence of God is, they want more, and he responds to that open heart. It's usually, and he really responds to a broken and contrite spirit. Because let's face it, our flesh is proud. We can do all things without him who strengthens me. I strengthen. But the Holy Spirit, the word that Loretta had for the church, God's people, the believers, was hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And it was so beautiful because she was up here and she really ministered to us all. It was a mutual fellowship. Um, <clears throat> and I was sitting over there near Adrian and as she said, I believe I have a word from the Lord for you guys. And it was hold on. And I was over there and I said in my heart, the best is yet to come. And that was the next words out of her mouth. As we looked at each other, she said, hold on. And she said, the best is yet to come. Amen. Hold on, church. The best is yet to come. Because a lot of you, a lot of us have had some really difficult struggles. Some very difficult struggles. But let me encourage you. Struggles, trials, tribulations, hardships bring you closer to God. They either harden you or they soften you. And the Holy Spirit will work through it all. They either harden you if you repel or they soften you if you say, okay, I'm weak, I'm undone, yes, and I need you. Yes, I need you. 
I need you. Yes. You don't need me. I need you. I need you. Yes. Let's see. Rocco has it up there. He asked me this morning, what is the name of your sermon? Be still and know that I am God. I know the time and season of your life. Be still. And know that I am God. I know the time and season of your life. Life <coughs> changes, and it's a long journey. And yes. it's going to change. Things you become familiar with, things you know how to do, there'll come a season where that changes. And God is not requiring you to live in that moment anymore. It's time to move on. Come on. Our bodies get older, they hurt. We're not able to dance as much as we'd like to. We're not able to bounce as much as we want to all the time. We're not able to do some of the things we used to do. It's not that the, the spirit doesn't want to do it, but the flesh gets weak. And then sometimes we get stuck in these spots where we've accepted where we are. And God wants you to know that I know the season you're in, and there's a reason for this season. It's not to harm you, it's to prosper you. It's to give you a hope and a future. He's softening the clay. The potter's hands are softening that clay. Well, actually, his hands aren't softening it. The Holy Spirit is softening the clay. And the hand of God is reforming fashion. If it's been smashed, if it's been broken, if it's been marred, the Holy Spirit has to soften that clay because it can get hard. So the Holy Spirit has to say, I know you're broken. I know you don't like this. I know it Come on. hurts. Come on. Yeah. But I'm here. And I promised I never leave you nor forsake me. Amen. Trust me. Be still and know that I am God, not you. Yes. I am God. That thing that so keeps you up at night, that you're so frightened of, be still and know that I am God. I know the time and the season of your life and those that are around you and that you love. I know the chains that are there. I know the misunderstandings. I know the bondage. I know the brokenness. I know it better than you know it. Because I created that person in love in their mother's womb. And I have a plan and purpose for them. And my time is not your time. My thoughts are far above your thoughts. Far above your thoughts. And my purpose is to give you a hope and a future and a plan. It's not the same plan as yesterday. Yesterday's gone. You live today. Yes. Today, if you continue to just wish this was over, to move on to the next place, you're just wishing your life away. Mm -hmm. There's something of value, a moment. Mm -hmm. Now, I wish I was what I was before. No, I wish I could be in the future. No, you're here now, today, live it. Love me, let me love you. Watch the people I bring in your life. They may not be the ones you expect or want even. But I want to say something to you. I want to teach you something. I want to show you something you don't know nothing about. I want to show you something. I've, I've heard your prayer. I know your heart. And I know you better than you know yourself. And I'm a good God. I'm a good... I don't scare you. I'm a good father. I love you. And I have plans and purposes that you know not of that you know not of. Maybe you had those plans and purposes a long time ago, and you thought they were over. No, I don't move on your timetable. You live and move and have your being in my timetable. I'm above time. I'm the beginning. I'm the end. I began this life that you have with me when you were born again. 
I had plans and purposes for you before you even knew I was alive, before you even cared that I was real. And I love you. You're my son. You're my daughter. And though you may not have experienced some of the things that you're hearing that I'm like, because your father and mother may not have been able to give them to you. They didn't have them. They did the best they could with what they had. You cannot give what you don't have. You can't. And you can't hold anybody that against anyone. You can't. Be still and know that I am. Listen. You'll hear me in the breeze. You'll hear me in your heart. I promised when you came to a crossroad, if you stood still, you look this way, you look that, and you stood still. Stop spinning. Stop rushing. And stop and look up and ask, what do I do? Which way should I go? Don't just react. That's what the world does. <coughs> Slow down and listen. He wants us to listen more than talk. We got a whole lot to say about a whole lot of things. But what's the value of it? Is it imparting life to someone you're talking to? Or is it imparting death? Is it a word of instruction in love? Or is it a slap in the face and condescending? Do you throw people off to the side when you're done with them? I've had enough. We all get tired. But you never know. Never, 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 never. You have to even have grace for yourself. Some of, some of God's children are so gracious to everyone else but themselves. They're really gracious to everyone else and they are hard as anything on themselves. God wants to give grace to all of his children. He wants us to be still and know that he's God, the Father, not only God, the creator of the heaven and earth, but he spoke things into existence. He always sees us, always hears us. Wherever we go, he sees. He hears. He loves. He knows. He knows when we're filling ourselves with things that are the husks of the world, that's pig slop from the world. He knows. But you know what he knows? He knows why we're doing it. Because there's something missing. There's something broken. Not we're the odd ones. Because God's children go through so many things. And there's a time for everything. There's a time to do and not to do. There's a time to sit. Martha and Mary. Every woman is a combination of Martha and Mary. Every woman. Mary's not bad, Martha's not bad. They're both women of God. They were. They're both there. One was very busy doing the things, you know, the men were coming, oh, we got to beat them. And she was really mad because Mary, the Bible says, took the bed apart and sat at the feet of Jesus. He was there. He wasn't just there in spirit, he was there. He was there. This person that they had all heard about, and they were having this big celebration, they were going to help the disciples and clean their feet and feed them. And it was like, a whirlwind of activity, ladies. And, and Martha was all ticked off that Mary sat down at the feet of Jesus. But was Jesus ever going to be there again in person? It was time to sit. That submission. And, and just even look at it. Just even look at him. Just look in his face and hear what he had to say, feel and touch. <coughs> he was there. The celebration, I mean, my goodness, Jesus was right in the midst. And we're Ooh! all over the place doing everything else. But Jesus was right there. Do we ever get caught up in life? Do we get caught up in ministry? Caught up in the things of church where we're, and we forget to sit when the Holy Spirit is in our presence. And he has something to say. We have some more coffee. You know, um, but there's a time to sit. We have to open our ears, our spiritual ears, and hear what is God saying today. Oh, 
I know it's hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> listen. Listen. Oh, here's Raffle helping me. <laughs> um, and, and, and I'm sure Martha was so ticked off. Is anyone going to help me? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing all the work. Do you, do you see this? I'm such the one who's doing everything. Look at that lace. Look at that lace. I bet Mary was sticking her tongue out at Martha. They were sisters. <laughs> Anyone relate? Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, okay. Be still and know that I am God. There's a season for everything under the sun. In Ecclesiastes 3, 7. A time to be silent and a time to speak. Yeah. Do you feel like no one's listening to you? Do you feel like you're unheard? Do you feel like your voice doesn't matter? Do you feel invisible? You know. But bring it to Jesus. Not everybody else. Bring it to Jesus. Because he really cares. It's a time to be silent and a time to speak. Maybe if we came away from our screens and spent more time with real people, <clears throat> turn the screen off, unplug, maybe we'd have that fellowship we want. Just a thought. But there is a time to be silent and a time to speak. And in Ecclesiastes there, it says there's a time for everything. It even says there's a time to hate, a time to love. But there's a time for everything. Be still and know that I am God. I'm listening. I'm going to answer the prayer. But don't be a child that's screaming to have your way. You're not in charge. I am. I've got a few things I want to teach my children. I love you, but... You've got to rest. Mary rested. The Israelites didn't enter. There were many of the Israelites that didn't enter into the rest of God. That doesn't mean you lay down and do nothing. No, it means I trust God enough to do what he says. Whatever you know that he has said in his word, do it. Just do it. Oh, well. He doesn't know my situation. Yes, he does. These people don't get me. I don't know if that's true or not, but he does. Mm -hmm. It's time for everything. And sometimes we just need to unplug. Sometimes we just need to be quiet and listen to the still, small voice because the Bible says that there's a still, small voice that you will hear. But if we're so busy and loud, how are we going to hear that? He will speak to you at your most painful times of life. And it will be so gentle, so quiet, so beautiful. But if you're so, you won't hear it because, and he'll come through other, other believers. Take his love. You don't have to prove a thing to God the Father. He knows. He knows. You can rest. You can rest. And know that He will do the work that only He can do in your life and in everybody else's. We don't need to lose our energy over someone who doesn't want to listen. If they don't want to listen, God could bring a miracle in front of them. They'll still not listen. That's true. Don't waste your Holy Spirit and energy and anointing yes. on the people that don't want to hear it. It's not about you. It's not because you didn't say it right, you didn't look right, facial contact, you know. Before you know, you won't say a thing. Because, and, and God doesn't want you not to bring his word and bring him to places. But don't be led by the faces of clay, what you're to do or not to do or say or not to say. You've got to know what his word says, 
and you've got to know how to spare the sleep of him. Not everybody else. When Jesus was here, there was a whole bunch of crowds screaming a whole bunch of stuff. And if he listened to all of them, he would have never accomplished the mission that God put on the face of this earth for. He had to go. Sometimes he said, I love you all. i got to go, go. I've got to go be with my father. I've got to unplug. I've got to rest. I've got to hear what he has to say because I only do what the father tells me to, what he does. I cannot be accountable to you. You're the children. He's God. I'm the child, too. We have to listen to him. And we can trust him because he's there for our good. Be still and know that I am God. Not only God, but God, your Father. Jesus was the one who taught us how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven. That was a new aspect. That was a new thought in the New Testament. God, now Father. Our fathers, our Father. Our flesh fathers or mothers, our Father. He's different. He's perfect. None of us are, but all of us are loved. All of us are loved. Um, there's a passage in the Bible that is from Isaiah, and the Lord put this particular scripture on my heart for today, but I read the whole contents of it, and I'm like, whoa. It says, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But Rocco found it in another version. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says in repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Repentance means to Stop doing what you're doing. Turn around and do the right thing. <laughs> not talk about it. Not pray about it. Not point the finger at somebody else. It's about you. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. Be repentance and rest is your salvation. And quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. And that passage talks about God's children when they were all busy looking for strength and direction from the ungodly nations. They were looking for those strong chariots, those fighters. Everybody had a direction that they wanted. You know, the Israelites wanted to be like them. They wanted to get the strength they had. But God, the Father, said to them, stop it. Come to me. This is what I say. The Holy One of Israel says, in repentance and rest is your salvation. Forget about them. Forget about them. They got a whole lot of strength and a whole lot of up, 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 up here, but they're not about me. You're my kids, and I love you. And you're going to get your rest, your salvation, quietness, your strength comes in knowing me and letting me fill you with my spirit. Children, Ephesians 6, 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, and the promise is that it may go well with you and you may live a long life in the land. Okay. We're children of God, even us moms, even us grandmoms. I mean, whatever age we are on the face of this earth, we're still, still kids learning, still kids. He's the eternal one. He's got the father. He's got the answers. And they're in here. They're in here. He's given us a guidebook. They're in here. They're in here. And the season, whatever season you're in, it's good. Don't waste your life looking back or forward and lose today the moment. Savor it. You never know what life will bring. I remember there was a friend of ours, Tommy Ritchie. Oh, he was such a wonderful guy. He was really rough. But, hey, God delivered him from the mob. And he still had a few sharp edges. I love you, Jesus. No. Um, but he, was, he would do anything for you. 
You could call him at four in the morning, he'd be there. Anything. Amazing man, Sal. He could build anything without any blueprints. <laughs> wow. Amazing carpenter. But I remember my husband, and he was your, one of your um, counselors, right? Teen Challenge when you were younger? And uh, I remember we had one spaghetti dinner, Italian dinner with him and his wife, and it was great. It was great. And we always wanted to do it again. But we kept letting that time go. Ah, we'll get together. Don't we all think we have all the time in the world? And life is, ah, ah, and he, he ended up being with the Lord. You know, it wasn't, we thought we had more time. And I don't say that to be a bummer. I'm just saying, appreciate your blessings. And let God do his thing. We don't do the miracles. We don't change the hearts. You're not changing me. And I'm not changing you. God. Holy Spirit. You know, last year when I, I spoke, it was the right hand of God. I watched it about pulling us out and leading us. When God's hand is upon you, he promised he'd never leave you or forsake you. And he yes. left you a comforter. Yes. Jesus said, it's good that I go, because if I don't, you won't have the comforter inside you all the time, everywhere, every moment, even when you're not at church, even when no one else is around. I'm here. I'm in you. I'm not only on you, children, I'm in you. Yeah. I'm in you. You're never alone. He knows wherever you go, and he's got a plan and a purpose, and there's a time for everything under the sun. You have one life. One life. Who are you? Please. Who do you live your life for? Love your family, love your friends, love, 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 but one day you're going to be before him. And we can't manipulate God. He knows why we do what we do. He knows when we're being real or we've got a mask on. He knows when we're trying to get our way, however we do it. And he knows when we're sincere. And he knows when we're learning. And he knows when we're trying. But please the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And your neighbor is yourself. Because he's who you're living for to please. Not everybody else around you. One life. Look up to the Lord. Look in his word. Yes. Eternity is real. And it's not that far away, church. Yeah, sure. Whether he comes for us mm -hmm. or whether something happens. So, yeah, that's it. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Be still and know that I am God. I know. I know you. I know you. Maybe that one over there doesn't understand you. What's it matter? You can't, you can't make them understand you. No one's going to. He does. He knows. And he loves. And he's got just as much for you as he does for the other one over there. He doesn't have favorites. But as much as you want of him is as much as you're going to get. If you don't want much, you won't get much. You want everything he has, he'll give it to you. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There's always been ISIS around. There's always been heathen. There's always been violence. Always been against God's people. Always. They're nothing new. But what about me? Plug into me. I'll take care of you no matter what happens. No matter what. Fear me, the one who created you, you're going to face one day and go into an eternity. And that fear is a healthy fear, not the fear that, you know, if you do something wrong, bam, you're out of here. That's not the, that's not the fear it is. The fear is a healthy fear so that you fear the things, not the faces of clay, not other people, not flesh, but the Lord who created everything. And he loves you. He's not just God, he's your father. He knows you. 
and he wants, there's a time to bounce and rejoice and celebrate. And we did that yesterday. And we're in the overflow. We are. I mean, I saw the ladies come in here. They're bouncing all over the place. That's the overflow. That's the Holy Ghost. They didn't drink some sort of punch I gave them yesterday, did they, Liz? No, Pam, we didn't drink any weird punch, did we? No, we, Judy, did we drink weird punch? But we drank from the fountain of the Holy Ghost. We drank from the fountain of the Holy Ghost. And he what came in like, you know, he doesn't want to just give us enough. So oh, I'm surviving. How you doing? Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, my God. And it gets like that sometimes with the Holy Ghost. Gives you energy, gives you right. hope, gives you right. peace, yeah. gives you what you need. God said, I'll give you bread. I'm not going to give you a stone if you ask for bread. You enjoy giving good gifts to your kids. I'm God the Father. I enjoy giving good gifts to my kids. Let me fill you with the Holy Ghost. Don't be scared of the Holy Ghost. He's your friend. He's what you want. He's the new wine. He's something that you... Yes. They got nothing to give you that's going to get you what I give you. That's true. They got nothing on me in the flesh. That's that's nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. So, the Holy Ghost, the anointing, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, he's not a scary thing. No. No. He gives you what you need. And everybody needs something a little different all the time. And he's so, he can so easily give us all what we need all at once. He doesn't love one more than the other. We don't even have to wait in line. Just call him up. He doesn't run out of energy. He doesn't run out of anointing. We do. So, in your busyness, in your service to your family, your friends, moms, I hope today that you'll get out of the way and let somebody serve you that you'll sit down and let your family serve you if they're able to. We don't have to control everything. Let God be God and let's let watch him move. Let others serve you when it's time to serve and when it's time for you to get up and help, do it. But be still and know that I am God I know the time and season of your life. I know you'd like to do that now, but I don't want you to. Stop feeling guilty. Slow down and let the next generations come up and let them help. Don't enable everybody. Just try to help. Oh. Oh. I'm not saying not help. <laughs> not saying that, okay? In returning and rest shall be your, thank you, shall be saved, you shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be your strength. That's quietness and confidence in the Lord. When the people marched around Jericho, do you know they didn't say a word? They didn't talk about, oh, well, I think God's going to do it this way, and then quote the scripture to each other, bam, 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 bam. They had to be quiet, and they just had to march and do it exactly the way God said, and they watched him. They didn't talk to each other. We got a whole lot of stuff to say in opinions. But is it God? Really? Me too. Be still and know that I'm God. Rest in him, return to him. If you've gotten off it here and there because the flesh has caused you to do more than you're supposed to, or to please it or yourself, just remember, come back and listen and sit at Jesus' feet and say, wait a minute, help me to return to what pleases you Amen. and what I'm supposed to do for you Amen. or not do for you yes. at this time and season in my life. Amen. So moms, happy Mother's Day. You have worked hard. You have worked hard. You have given of your life everything there is. You have poured out and poured out and poured out. And when you see that good in them, that's part of you. 
when you see their rebellion or their challenge, don't take that so personal. Don't let them manipulate you that way either. We're all human. And we all make choices, as many pastors say, everybody does whatever they want. So moms, you've done a good job. Give God the glory and whatever else is there that needs to be done, let him do it. It's not your fault right. if right. someone's imperfect. Right. And I'm, I, I'm saying that to myself. You know? So, let's take the good, let's live our lives, let's remember what season we're in, and don't live in the past or the future, live the moment by moment. Be still and know that the Father loves you. Enjoy your day, have fun, eat, do whatever it is you're doing, and if you don't have children, maybe you can go somewhere with someone else, or the men, if you, you know, bless somebody. Bless somebody. So, moms, you rock, you're wonderful, you're great, and God, you make the world a better place and a beautiful place. And you're beautiful. You're prettier than those flowers. And gentlemen and children, obey your mother. So life may go well for you. There's a promise there. You're going to look back one day and say, geez, why didn't I listen to my mom? I wouldn't have, well, that's all right. We all do that. But let's try to be like Dorothy said. Let's try to please the one who really loves us the most which would be a mom, but even more, the Lord. So.